for a more lengthy discussion about this topic can be found in the Enigmas podcast. Link in the bio. On the foggy morning of 15th December 1900, the steamer Arctur from Philadelphia was on a passage to Lee. A few days after their departure, they passed by the seven islets known to locals as the Seven Hunters. Stood on top of the highest peak of the biggest island of them all is a lighthouse. However, there was no light shining from its lantern. It seems as though it was abandoned, or rather, no one is on duty on that day. When the steamer Arctur finally reached the shore of Leith on the 18th, the sighting was passed onto the northern lighthouse board. Thus, a relief vessel called Hesperus was dispatched. The initial plan was to depart as early as possible, but due to the adverse weather, they had to postpone their journey. It was only on the noon of the 26th, more than a week after the lighthouse was first seen to be inactive, that the relief vessel finally reached the shore of Eileen Moore. The lighthouse was manned by three men, James Ducat, Thomas Marshall, and Donald MacArthur, with a rotating fourth man spending time on shore. Jim Harvey, who was the captain of the relief vessel, stated that when he and his crew were approaching the shore of the island on the noon of 26 December, they found that the flagstaff had no flag, and all of the provision boxes were left on the landing stage for restocking. They attempted to inform the lighthouse keeper of their arrival by blowing the ship's whistle and firing a flare. But despite their effort, no one was there to welcome them ashore. At first, they thought the men weren't aware of their arrival, which was understandable considering that they were a week late. When they finally docked, Joseph Moore, the relief keeper, was initially told to inspect the lighthouse by himself. As Moore climbed the hill of the island, each step he took felt heavy. A sense of unease increasingly washed over him the closer he gets to the entrance. Something was not right. Aside from the howling ocean wind and the crashing of the waves, the island was silent. When he got to the entrance of the lighthouse, he noticed that the door was unlocked. As he entered the compound, he noticed how lifeless it was. Not a single lighthouse keeper was in sight. Looking at the scene, for some reason, it's as if the men were in a hurry and left the lighthouse and has abandoned it ever since. The lamps were unlit, food was still on the table, a chair was overturned, the beds unmade, and all the clocks had stopped. Judging from the inactivity of all the clocks in the area, it's safe to say that they were gone for several days now. After witnessing the scene of the lighthouse, Moore returned and retrieved Hesperus's second mate, McCormack, who was a seaman for a further investigation. After a more thorough search, that found that the lamps had been cleaned and refilled. A set of oil skins was found, suggesting that one of the keepers had left the lighthouse without them. Moore and McCormack scoured through every corner of the island, but found no sign of any of the keepers, neither inside of the lighthouse, nor anywhere on the island. After scouring every corner of the island, they went back and reported to Captain Harvey what they have found. There was only two considerable evidence which indicates that something had happened to the man. The first evidence was the lighthouse's logbook, which contains the description of the tasks that were carried out on each day. However, the final three entries of the logbook were out of the ordinary. The first one was the entry dated December 12th by Thomas Marshall describing the abnormal storm that had struck the island on that very day. The storm was so strong that it had the men on their knees, praying for their lives. Marshall wrote, Severe winds, the likes of which I've never seen before in 20 years. He later wrote that Ducat, 
the oldest man in their crew had been quiet while the young MacArthur was in tears. MacArthur had a reputation as a tough and experienced seafarer, which further shows the colossal scale of the storm that had struck the island on that day. The final log entry was made on the 15th December. It simply read, Storm ended. Sea calm. God is over all. What do they mean by God is over all? The second evidence was the damages that were found on the west landing. A box at 33 meters above sea level had been broken and its contents were strewn about. Iron railings were bent over. The iron railway by the path was wrenched out of its concrete. And a rock, weighing more than a ton, had been displaced. On top of the cliff, at more than 60 meters above sea level, the turf had been ripped away as far as 10 meters from the cliff edge. Under the order of Captain Harvey, James Moore was left at Eileen Moore to carry out his duty of relighting the lamp and, if possible, to find the whereabouts of the three lighthouse keepers. He was accompanied with three volunteers which were Alan McDonnell, the Boymaster, and Seaman Campbell and Lamont. Harvey then went to Breezecleet in Lewis, the site of the nearest telegraph station, and sent an urgent telegram to his employer. The secretary of the Northern Lighthouse Board in Edinburgh stated 26 December 1900, stating, A dreadful accident has happened at the Flannans. The three keepers, Ducat, Marshall and MacArthur, have disappeared from the island. The clocks were stopped and other signs indicated that the accident must have happened about a week ago. Poor fellows, they must have been blown over the cliffs or drowned trying to secure a crane. When returning to the mainland, many of the locals speculated what happened to the men. Some came up with possible logical explanations such as drowning. Others believed that they were taken by supernatural forces living on the island and were spirited away to the other world. More than 10 years later, the events were still being commemorated and elaborated on. The 1912 Ballad Flannan Isle by Wilfred Wilson Gibson refers erroneously to an overturned chair and uneaten meal laid out on the table, indicating that the keepers had been suddenly disturbed. Yet, as we crowded through the door, we only saw a table spread for dinner, meat and cheese and bread, but all untouched and no one there, as though when they sat down to eat, ere they could even taste, alarm had come and they in haste had risen and left the bread and meat, for at the table had a chair, they tumbled on the floor. What do you think of today's topic? Do let me know what you think in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll get notified as soon as there's a new episode. Stay safe and have a great day.